Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an associate minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. We're located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue, and, it's, and our phone number is 773-488-2991. You can also look us up on Facebook, YouTube, or our website page and like us or subscribe, and we would appreciate it and thank you in advance. Let us pray. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, Glorious Riches. Our devotional reading comes from Galatians, the third chapter, verses 19 through 29, and our background scripture comes from Colossians 1, verse 24, to Colossians 2, verse 3, which we will study in the lesson. The whole entire background scripture is Colossians 1, verse 19, to Colossians 2, verse 5. And the main thought of the memory verse is Colossians 2, verses 2 and 3, that their hearts might be comforted, being knitted together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom, three, in whom all hid, are, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Our lesson, Glorious Riches, has absolutely nothing to do with material or financial wealth. Paul instead is writing to the church at Colossae, which he didn't plant, but Epirus, Colossians 1, 3 to 1, and Colossians 4 and 12. He was writing to Colossae being a church comprised of Jews and Gentile believers. The Jewish people were still trying to hold on to the law of Moses to the letter. And the Gentiles were coming from worshiping many gods, polytheistic, to worshiping the one true God. The richest Paul wanted them to grasp was the full assurance of understanding of what was available to all who heard and believed the mystery of God or the gospel of the Father and of Christ where all knowledge of wisdom comes from. Paul speaks of his ministry as being one of suffering. Acts 9 verse 16 is spoken by Jesus, but he's not complaining because he know his suffering has been for the sake of of the believers and bringing new believers into the fold. Paul doesn't compare, compare his afflictions to that of Christ that lacked nothing, but that he has not completed the sufferings he will endure in the name of Jesus Christ. It's told again in Acts 9 and 16, and here, verse 24, it said, Who can rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church? Verse 25, let's go to the verse, and then I'll explain it to you. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you 
to fulfill the word of God. Paul once again refers to himself as a minister, Colossians 1 and 23 also. The Greek word dikakanos, where we get our word deacon from 1 Timothy 3, 8 and, 8 and 12, he is not referring to any office of the church, but as a servant, as translated in Matthews 23 and 11, John 12 and 26, and other scriptures. What Paul is doing is not of his own, but by mandate or orders from Jesus Christ. Acts 9 and 15. The benefits of Paul's ministry would be them for you by fulfilling the word of God. And fulfilling the word of God is done by preaching the word of God that others can receive it. The mystery is the plan of God for humanity. Until it has, until it was revealed in person and through the work of Jesus Christ, even though Jesus revealed God's plan, most people still didn't comprehend it. Matthew 16, 5 through 12, Mark 7, 8, 17 to 18, the work of Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension are essential to the gospel message. Now this mystery is revealed to all Christians or saints, as they say in 26. Even a mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, the saints of God. Continuing from the last verse, from this verse, to include the Gentiles as part of the church, which is the body of Christ. Not only is Christ in us, but we also are in him. There's a two-way street, just like Jesus always said, that which I do is not from me, but from him that sent me. That which I say is not of me, but from him that sent me. Just as Jesus and God are one in one, us and God are in each other. If we're in Christ, then he has to be in us. Christ being the hope of glory, which helped fulfill God's promise to Abraham. Genesis 15, verses 5 to 6, and now refers to riches or spiritual blessings. Verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, we preach and teach teaching being more important because in his epistles Paul teaches twice as much as he preaches. Through his teaching we receive the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7 that though that though we will never be perfect in the flesh through God's wisdom, we pursue perfection through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Verse 28, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The work of Paul or any other Christian did, is doing, or ever will do, is by power or energy from the Holy Spirit and not from ourselves. We can't do nothing on our own. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, not through me, that strengthens me. 
through the church and the word of God, we ought to be reconciled, justified, and complete in holiness that's sanctified as God's desire. Verse 29, whereas I also labor, striving according to his work, which worketh in me mightily. Paul has been praying for these believers that collage, though it seems as if he had never visited there, he is striving, fervent. He got a conflict in his prayers. Laodicea, about 10 miles from Colossae, Paul is also concerned about the unity of Christians there also, which only comes through Christ. Verse 1, Colossians 1 and 1. I mean, I'm sorry, Colossians 2, verse 1. For I would that you know what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. And in spite of the problem, Paul desires that their hearts will, their heart, their will, their attitude be encouraged and strengthened in their quest for unity among believers. Verse 2, our memory verse 2 and 3. 2 is that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together. That's 1, in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, and of Christ. Paul is concerned the unity of Christians there also because the unity of Christians only come through Christ. Paul desires in spite of problems that their hearts, their will, their attitude be encouraged and strengthened through, their com through this comfort would all arise the unity they desire in purpose and thought. They be knitted together with the wisdom of God and knowledge of him, this love can be achieved. Believers are to have confidence and power that comes from the ability to know between true and false teaching concerning the understanding of the mysteries of God. No one can reveal the hidden truths of the Bible or the mysteries of God except through Christ Jesus himself and through the power of the Holy Spirit who holds all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge because Christ is the word, the living word. Knowledge is the, the ability to mentally grasp something and wisdom is the ability to use that knowledge appropriately. Verse three, in whom all hot, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. At this lesson, God then and now primarily takes care of his church through human hands, pastors, ministers, deacons, ushers, etc. Paul knew this and he was telling the believers then, and he's telling us today that those as Paul are doing the work today, we need others to carry on after us. They, as we, must also be alert and aware of false teachers and take action to remove them from the church to receive the glorious riches that God has for us here on earth. We must seek wisdom and knowledge from God, love and unity as believers for one another to keep false doctrines 
out of God's house. Glorious riches. And again, on behalf of a pastor, Reverend Kevin Wilkes, and the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church family, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday School lesson. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. And thank God.